there are so many things that you do and you don't get the job because of what you do. What is it that turns off the recruiter? Number one, you don't look in the eye. You don't look in the eye. And it's because probably you're shy, maybe your culture. When you are going to an interview, they expect you to look in the eye. This is the American culture. You have to train yourself to look in the eye when you talk. The next thing is you provide vague answers. So when they ask you specific questions, for example, what is your weakness? And you say, uh, time management, that's not enough. You have to show and elaborate more about why is time management your weakness and what you do about it. Then you also uh, don't show up an interview. You have an appointment on Monday, three o'clock, and you are not there. So that turns off the reporters. I know so many people kind of like, want to get a job just because they have benefits you don't mention that in the interview you don't ask how many vacations you have how many sick days you have how many do i get any benefits that's a turn off because you are there for the job but you are not there for the company you come for the interview they're asking about um what is your organization about that's kind of like shows you don't do your homework you are kind of like waiting for answers and that's a big turn off because there are so many tools out there you can use google and find out what the company does the next thing is when someone comes for the interview and tells so many bad things about their current employer why they don't like this uh, boss why he's so toxic why he wants to leave and it's not good you are kind of like bad mouth the company so most likely you will bad mouth my company as well and i like this one drama you show drama to the employer to the hiring manager about why how bad it is how you don't like it what happened what would not happen all kinds of stuff sharing rumors and gossip and nobody likes that the next thing that i see the candidates do not show excitement they're either bored or not motivated and it's all said that bad energy is not really good the next thing is the candidate lies they don't show honesty they don't show integrity and let's say when i ask what mistakes you've made for the past three years and the candidate says none nothing i mean we're all humans you should have some mistakes done along the way so this honesty doesn't reflect on you so kind of like think about your response could be you were not prepared but it's time to be prepared i, I really had you prepared if you look at this card i prepared what questions to ask what questions to answer what to expect so there's a lot of homework that, that, that you can do there's no reason for you to say I wasn't prepared. The next thing is, depending on your culture, depending on where you're from, I hear curses, curses. I mean, it doesn't matter what job it is, even like for a cleaning job, you are not supposed to curse. So, or you are inappropriately dressed, or you are saying inappropriate things. That's a big turn off, even though it's a cleaning job, even though it's a low, low salary job, you are not supposed to be using this language and you are supposed to be dressed appropriately. Something that you are showing presentable and serious about getting the job. Your job is to impress. I have mentioned in this video how you, what clothes you need to wear, what type of clothes you need to wear for the interview, for the job, so you are going to be looking impressive. Uh, chewing gum in the interview, come on, didn't you learn not to chew gum? I remember when I was in high school, the professor was saying, do, do not, not chew, chew gum. gum. It's, it's not, not allowed. allowed. That's, That's the policy. You cannot chew, chew gum. gum. And what makes you think that for the job, you're allowed to chew gum? The next thing is lack of cleanliness. You're a messy person you are not organized so let's say some people come with i don't know from dunkin donuts iced coffee and they leave it on the table where the hiring manager is sitting and while you're interviewing you drink it and then you put it back you drink it you put it back and the condensation of that of that 
iced coffee is at on the table. That shows you're very messy and disrespectful, like who told you you can come and mess that table. I know it's petty to think about this, but it is showing who you are. The next thing is you provide answers that are conflicting. So let's say a hiring manager is going to ask you a question. You're going to answer it. And then the next question is kind of like similar. Now you're giving a different answer. So that's what psychological behavior questions. And you are kind of like being trapped. They're trying to see exactly how honest you are. And at the end, you are saying conflicting answers and they are not correct. They are not making sense. They don't match. So think about the answers, the questions as well. The most rudest thing that a candidate can do is look at the phone while you're at the interview, unless you have Zoom, or texting while you're at the interview. I do get a ring, the phone rings and I say, I'm sorry, let me shut it off. But I don't respond, even though they tell you can respond. I say, no, like, it's okay, I can't wait. So responding to a cell phone or text is inappropriate. Or even a smartphone, if you have smartwatch, please do not even text anything. You don't show interest as a candidate. So let's say when I ask you, do you have any questions for me? And you say, no, I don't. So you show you don't have any curiosity. It maybe you don't know what, what to say or how, what questions to ask. I really have some questions you can ask right here. I'm all prepared for you. Or you can download 200 questions that you can ask. You can choose any and ask 200 questions. You apply for a job as a candidate and then you probably did not read the job description and you show weaknesses. You express weaknesses about the position that you applied for. So you probably need to do your homework before, before you even go for an interview. Find out what the job you apply for, what it entails. I know sometimes happens that you are desperate for a job, you apply for so many jobs and then you're clueless who actually called you. And which company is this? For what position you apply for? I got you covered. I have a resume log that you can download it and you are going to actually log for each job you apply for, for each position and whoever responded to you and that way you know who is the company that you apply for and what they are looking for. Even though you are qualified for the job, you don't show the passion for it. Let's say you are a teacher you are applying for a teacher position and then you don't show passion for your teaching you don't show interest you don't show motivation you just go and yes you have credentials you have the experience but you don't show you like you're gonna like the job at all so think about this is really reflecting on you of who you are and most likely you are not going to get the job, unfortunately. Let's say the interview went well and you think, wow, I think I got the job. And guess what? You forgot to do the last thing, which is follow up post interview thank you email. You forgot to say thank you. Thank you for your time for interviewing me. Thank you for considering me. I have tons of thank you letters that you can choose and pick to write the emails for. It's down in the, in the description. And really, you shouldn't have a reason why not to get a job. So like this video if you learned so much so far and you do any of this so far. Let's say you did send a thank you email and you still didn't get a job. You either sent a generalized email saying thank you without having the name or if you did write the name but it was misspelled or it wasn't really relevant what you said, generalized letter. So don't do this mistake. Let's say you did that. You did the follow-up email, you passed the interview, and now you are invited for a second interview. And they ask you before you come for the second interview to provide extra information, extra materials to showcase your portfolio. And you showed up without the portfolio. You didn't do your homework. So that's a huge turn off. Let me know in the comments if you do any of this and what is it you suggest that needs to be done or what is it you suggest that I missed 
perhaps we can include it on the next video. Subscribe to this channel and share with your friends who are looking desperately for a job and don't get a job. So I hope that they watch this video and they are going to learn their mistakes and they are going to get a job next time. I'll see you in the next video.